Hello, and welcome to Weary Dads. I'm your host, PJ Weary, with and I'm, my co-host. I'm the co-host. The, I'm, yes. I'm dad. And today's episode is brought by, to you by Bubbly again, because Bubbly's going to get behind us. Really believe this? This is the Bubbly Raspberry? I believe in the Bubbly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is the raspberry. I like the blueberry pomegranate better and the black raspberry, but this is still a fine drink. And um, which also one, another which sponsor this? today is Titleist Golf Hats. There you go. Look at that. This hat is a fine. Your, yes, that's I. That's a good I hat. I need to find the Weary Dad's hat. Well, I'm I really have bummed. mine, uh, but I'm wearing, so this is a pet peeve. I'm wearing Under Armour, and you can't wear a Nike hat with Under Armour clothes. Yes, but I, know I don't know that's why important you can wear a Titleist people. Golf Hat, but you can, because Titleist is an overall theme. Folks, let's get to the episode because none of this matters. Uh, other than bubbly. 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 Yeah, because they're going to You have to honest. believe in the bubbly. <laughs> Today's episode is about Sabbath. Mm. Uh, this is a book that um, didn't really need a, a deep dive, but I, I found it helpful. Uh, it's. Uh, let me make sure I get the title right. Sabbath by Walter Brugman. The um, uh, Sabbath as resistance. I want to make sure I said that right now. Um, saying no to the culture of now. Mm. And I don't agree with everything sure. that Walter Brugman says or uh, even how he handles everything in the book. But there are just several key points that really made an impact on me. Uh, I sought the book out. I was looking up what people consider the best books on Sabbath. There were a couple others that I'll be looking at, but I thought, and so maybe we'll do this, you know, a different takes on Sabbath. But for this one, Sabbath as an act of resistance, uh, I think was really useful. Um, for him, it's a critique of our consumer-driven, consumption-driven materialist culture. And oof, when you talk about Sabbath, what Sabbath means, what's supposed to mean, I, there's no way to really escape that conclusion. Um, and what, what I loved most is that he really hit hard that uh, even when we look at Sabbath and we say we're going to hold to it, it's in a very negative light. It's like, I'm not going to do these things. It becomes about obedience, about ritual, when really Sabbath, its main purpose is to be life-giving and to be uh, community-affirming. And I think that's just a really important point to take away from this is that God doesn't give us things because he wants to take away. Uh, when he does take away, it's to allow room for good things to grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, so kind of for him, and he's an Old Testament scholar. Uh, again, I don't agree with everything in the book. Of course, that's typical, right? Um, I don't always agree with how he handles scripture, but I do think he's right in this. Uh, when you look at the Torah, those first five books, the Pentateuch, it's important to always keep in mind that they are a collection of sermons and a collection of covenants mm -hmm. made to a people who have just come out of slavery in Egypt. Very good. And so when you talk about Sabbath, understanding Sabbath in terms of they were slaves is so powerful because one of the things about slaves is slaves don't really get days off. No. Right? Right. And so one of the things that they had been put through and it only intensified with during the Exodus, right? Before the Exodus finally that split happened was work. Was you uh and Pharaoh's biggest critique was of the lazy people. That that he's like it says it over and over again. You just want to go, you say you want to go off and worship your God, you're saying that because you're lazy. Uh you are lazy, so I'm gonna have you do more work. And I obviously, yeah, and it's funny because I feel this in myself, I don't want to promote being lazy, but I think the biggest struggle we, we generally have in this culture is really the opposite. Um, at least from, you know, the, there's that kind of low level person to person where some people are just lazy. That's, that's true. But I think the general received wisdom of the culture, you know, when people are like, oh, I just can't get ahead and they're working a 40 hour job. And people are like, well, you just pick up a part-time job. And it's like, is that the answer? No, the answer is to live with less so that you yeah. can still live. Yes. Oh, it's live with less. Or it's maybe you have a bad employer. You know what I mean? 
so you know for, for me as you're talking about this um by the very nature of what we did for work there really it was hard sometimes to get uh, time away um mm-hmm. because as a youth pastor or slash coach there's always somebody you could text back then write a note to encourage and i felt that at time um uh and even when we were at the college you, you know i tell people this all the time they'll say i don't know how you do what you do at uh for nation of coaches hmm. you get i mean you guys are always busy and stuff and i go this is cupcake from what i did at the <laughs> college because it was 80 90s uh hours a week and honestly i just told somebody this the other day when i was dean of students we at least had the months off in the summer when i was AD and coach, I traveled and spoke a lot during the summer. It was very busy. Yeah. But the fact is, it is imperative that we set aside a time to grow. And and we set aside time, your mom and I, to um, instill some Sabbath principles, no question. And I look forward to sharing those. Yeah. uh, Really excited to hear those. I think some of the things that um, he mentioned were one, that Sabbath. Uh, is something that eventually, you know, in the Ten Commandments you have Sabbath, but then in the further covenant, like there are Sabbath principles that get played out in things like generational poverty, according to God's system, would be eliminated because you always return land back to the people you took it from, right? Debts are canceled every seven years. Uh, They tell, you know, they're told if you have someone, and so and what I want to say is if someone's lazy and uh, they're not doing what they're supposed to do, then there should be consequences to that. But the fact that the idea that people are then born into poverty, their kids are born into poverty, and that they are working themselves out of a hole, that's a different discussion. And I'm not a theonomist. I'm not going to say, oh, we should take the Old Testament laws and apply them, but I uh, apply them directly, right? But I do think that there are principles there that are really powerful about um, not subjugating people through different systems um and so th- there's uh a, a something that's underlying all this even as, as we talk about this with uh it the this act of resistance to coercion and a, as slaves they had come out and one of the, the the part where he talks about um this is the sabbath day keep it holy and it will be the same for your male servants and your female servants and your kids and for everybody, everybody rests. Because when you're hearing that commandment, especially for them, they're thinking, oh, but I can make, the, I can make the other people work, right? And that's a real, it's like, no, no, on this day, everyone rests because everyone deserves rest. The word Sabbath means to cease. Yeah. To stop. Mm-hmm. And some people just don't, see that they don't think that's important mm. um but I, I i will tell you if you, you this is how you keep from burning out we had a guy that i worked with in connecticut that um actually thought that uh the five-day work week was not wise and that to stop on sundays so what he did decide to do is he decided uh, he even tried not sleeping Oh, for, for five, <laughs> this guy, he, yes. he would work five. His name was Dave. He worked for mm-hmm. five to ten days straight without sleeping. Yeah, and then for four or five days, he'd be out of it. He was literally, and what companies have found, yeah, the best work schedule yeah. is not work ten days, take four off. It's work six, yeah, or work hard five. Yes, but the biggest thing is taking a day off. Oh, yeah, giving people re- they have found that. That's because I believe that is clearly um, God's plan. Well, can I can I jump in there? Please, ju- the, and then I have much to say, but you have you know piggyback all of this. So the the other then there were two main chapters that really helped me. One was that resistance to coercion and that idea of like it's it's a time when everyone needs to rest, right? And seeing that from the the slaves' perspective, they had been ordered around. It'd be easy for them to order other people around because that's what they knew. But this resistance to anxiety. And this hurt. This is the one that I was like, oh, we need to talk about this. Because he, uh, Walter Brueggemann, uh, Dr. Brueggemann brings in Matthew, uh, Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. And as a business owner, and you mentioned it, when you are self-directed, when you are given a position where you are supposed to, you are in charge of your own responsibilities and how much work you do, there's always more to do. And since we own our own business, Always. there's something to do. And so really that is when the Sermon on the Mount, 
Jesus saying, look at the birds, look at the flowers. They neither toil nor spin, and yet they are arrayed more better than Solomon. And when I look at Sundays, and we have, uh, we have chosen to work on some Sundays. And you know what? I look back, I don't remember what we did. No. Nope. And you know what? It wouldn't have even made a difference. It really wouldn't have. And I, I look at that and I say, it was my anxiety. It was me worrying too much about tomorrow, not knowing what the trouble would be that the day would bring forward. And looking at it and like, that is a lack of faith. That is doubting God's goodness and doubting his provision. There's some people out there maybe also going, well, you know, the Sabbath really is for the Jewish people Saturday and we get that. Right, 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 okay, right. But we're going to stay with the fact that we can't choose one day a week and for America, that seems to be Sunday. Yes. Well, and there's, there's Christian precedent for that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the, so the one thing that um, we started to do, your mom and I, mm. and I think it's helped, is uh, we didn't plan anything for Saturday nights. So yes. we would eat dinner. We try to eat before six, but it was okay if it went a little after six. But really from six to six the next day, yeah. we prepared our heart and mind for worship on Sunday morning. Yeah. Okay, I don't even know if you guys kind of noticed that we maybe would stay home. We, didn't, we tried not to do something on Saturday night. And the truth is, this is funny, but Sunday night around 6, mm. I get this feeling I start gearing up for work. And I'm okay with it because I've started my, I've done a complete 24 hours. Like, And you know what we'll do on su- Sunday night sometimes? Well, first of all, I review my week. Hello. There it is. is. my brain. <laughs> And I'll review my week. I'll plan it out. I write all the stuff in that I would uh, try to get, need to get done. And then actually, um, and this is just started, mom will do laundry once in a while on Sunday night, but not during the day, not at two. Um, other thing is like, we, I try not to do things on Sunday. Now I'll be honest with you. I could go golf on Sunday. To me, that's not work most of the time. Sometimes when I play, I feel like it's work. But anyhow, <laughs> but especially if I have Monday off, yeah. I'll just take a Sunday, go golf, make Sunday night leisure. Yeah. I like, I stop. It's really, really, really helped me. And, and I think I'm, that's big that it, it is like play is okay. Right. I think that it kind of yeah, comes out. And I'm careful of the play because yeah. some people like they go hard all weekend long. Yes. And they're more tired going into work and they've not kept it a day for the Lord. Right. Right. The it, point so, is yeah. to rest. And what makes you rest? I, I think that's great. You know, it's not that you have to lay static on your on your couch it's that you are supposed to rest in a way that rejuvenates your spirit i mean that goes back to uh god doesn't have to rest but he chooses to rest he chose to rest yes and that that's this idea that it it goes all the way to the top that we have this image of god in us and we that is our way of part of the, the way that we reflect it is by um by taking rest so um one of the other things that I, I've done, and, and folks, for those of you that know me, when I, when I was well, in my teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, and even uh, early 50s, like uh, people would say, where does your husband get all this energy? <laughs> I, I, I came out of the womb with energy. Like I, yeah. um, PJ's uh, youngest son um, has bizarre amount of energy. He'll just, it, yesterday we were in the backyard and he picked up a good size rock, and he just walked up to us and set it down. Now he's four. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Went back down and picked up another one. And these aren't light. And no. you're thinking, <laughs> is he going to drop it on his foot? But you got to let him be. Who he, he was is. definitely considering dropping it on his brother. But, we stopped right. that. <laughs> long, long story short, is my parents tell me that when I was younger, when I yeah. was two or three, I pushed the living room coffee table across the room and I went back and forth with it for like an hour. That's just my very nature. But I have hit a time in my life where I am now getting old. Mm. Um, I will literally schedule in the afternoon a nap. Before we're doing this podcast, I worked pretty, I don't know how else to tell you this, but pretty strong from like 8.30 till about 2 o'clock hard on Nation to Coach and stuff. Great. I took a nap. We're doing this podcast. And tonight, I'll do more Nation to Coach and stuff, which I can do. With my wife sitting next to me in the chair, I'll do a lot of our Salesforce work, which some of you might not know. Long Administrative work. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can yeah, do yeah. But um, there has always been a time that even when I was in my 30s and 40s, there were days, you know, I just would go, get to bed at 11. I'd read in bed. I couldn't mm-hmm. fall asleep. Read till 12, get up at 6.30. Yeah. Go into my day. 
Well, folks, if you think about that, you're not getting seven, eight hours sleep. I was always getting less than that. Yeah. But Sunday afternoons, <laughs> I would have some of the most wonderful naps that yeah. we set aside that time to rest. Mm. Without t- telling you folks what to do, I do think there's an unbelievable, well, I won't, I don't mind telling you, this is a principle that mm. you've got to set aside that day. Yeah. And it should also be set aside to worship and yeah. reflect on Christ. Yes. I, it's about, it's about rejuvenation, right? Like but not only your body, your mind, but your heart. Spirit. Yeah. Oh, yeah I mean, that's, that's really the good. point of going into, I mean, that's the point of um, the Lord's Supper is that idea of like coming together in communion with your, uh, with the people of God. Um, and that's, uh, you know, incredible thing. Um, kind of as we, as we wrap up here, uh, you know, how do, how do we apply this as, a, as men? How do we apply this as husbands? How do we apply this as fathers? Uh, I'm going to go a little more personal than, you know, just as a man. Um, this is something that I know and I keep letting fall through the cracks. Uh, and there, it's, it's kind of an odd principle, uh, an odd offshoot of what we've been talking about. But you win the day the night before. And that's something that I really struggle with. I know I'm way more productive, way more productive when I wake up early in the morning. And I get mad because I, I don't do that. I don't wake up in the morning. And the reason I don't wake up in the morning is not because I don't want to. It's because the night before, I just let it peter out. I stay up a little too Watch late on my language. phone. You just <laughs> use my name <laughs> in vain. My name too. too. Yeah. <laughs> Did that give me the right? I don't know. <laughs> um, but I just, I just let the, the night slip away from me. I let the hours go by because I'm just drained from the day because I haven't gotten done what I need to get done. And I get in these weird cycles where I'm just on my phone and, the, you know, as far as rest goes, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say no screens on, on Sunday, but if you're just sitting there staring at your phone, that's not restful for your, your heart or your mind. And so, and there's tons of science. They've done tons of studies. If you're, you're looking at screens before you, you go to bed, a, you won't sleep Do you need to do well. science studies or do you know yourself too? You've right, seen right. We know. So, so let me tell you, so, yeah. one of the big things I'll be wa- in, in the evening. Yeah. Um, I, we try to get to bed, your mom and I, between 10 and 10.30. Yeah. Every night now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Um, really, 10. Mm-hmm. And we were getting up at 5.45, going for our walk and stuff. Uh, we went to the Final Four, and things have kind of got tweaked there, uh, especially because I've been sick. But doing much better, so we, we want to get back on that schedule. Mm. But I will tell you, there are two things that you've just said. One of the things is when I'm watching... Uh, like college games or something and Twitter's flying, I'll read what's going on. Mm. That can be very, very unhealthy for me at night because I'll be looking at all the, what people are saying about the games and stuff and it makes my mind run. So that, I just saw that the other day. I'm spending way too much time getting a reaction from what's going on. Um, But I will tell folks this, Mm. and this, I'm so glad to hear you say that because obviously we live in the separate homes, but same house. Okay, we have our own little places. Right, right. But, I think PJ would say this. I become kind of a schedule freak. Like I, I, I like. And so, I wouldn't say that. Oh yeah. yeah, I am. I like. I'm in bed by ten, ten thirty. I'm up, and and one yeah. of the things I do is I gear up for the next day. Actually, folks, I showed you this like real quick. This is today, you know, and you can see the things I highlighted that I got done. This is just before we start. I've already written down what to do tomorrow, and I'll try to get some of that done. But I prepare. For tomorrow, late afternoon and in the evening. That's part of the things I'm still doing because I'm organizing what I got to get done. And I've always had way more success if I write what I need to get done the night before or earliest in the morning. But you have to go to bed, right? Right. If you if you wake up (laughs) and it's worth it. And it's yeah. And this is what you're doing with the Sabbath, is you're taking a day to rest, yeah, to recover, to prepare for the rest of the week. Yeah. And some people walk in on Mondays Mm -hmm. and and, uh, boy, this will be a and they're not, because they don't take a Sabbath, mm. they're stealing. Oh, that's not a very nice thing to say. <laughs> but they are giving their best efforts yeah. on their Saturday and then their Sunday fun. Yeah. Like out playing around, and I'm really going to be careful, party and do whatever. Then they walk in. I had it happen when I worked in the world. People walk in with headaches on Monday, and they're, and they're getting paid to teach in a school, mm. all right, and I was going to be real honest, this is not when I was teaching the Christian school, <laughs> the public school, and they would walk in, and they were miserable. They were miserable to the students. The students didn't like them yeah. because they didn't count their job, their responsibility, and they didn't take a Sabbath. 
they were all about the weekend. Right. And that's not a great way to live. Right. And there's very unfulfilling. Yes. And that's that goes back to even calling and purpose, right? Like, you know, making sure that you finding ways to be fulfilled in your work or changing work to be fulfilled. Um, as a husband, I think one of the things that uh, I think is really important, and we've done a better job of this, um, and this is just throughout the week too, but especially on Sundays, uh, family meals. It's a f- time of communal rejuvenation, right? Uh, especially for Christians, you know, you, you go to church, going with the kids, um, and we've spent the money, and I, I don't regret it. We, uh, like this last week, we went to Fifth Street a- a- Eatery, and it's outside. It was a beautiful day. The boys, it's great for them because they can write with chalk on the asphalt. And so everyone can just relax, have a good time. We enjoy the food. And it wasn't, it's not about, oh, I don't have to cook because I actually had food at home, which we used for dinner that night. But it was the, that time spent out and feeling rejuvenated and you it, said it's a, a good spot. It's like, and it's, it's a stopping and a, a family. And it, it makes a be, big difference for your wife, no, right? It, like, very, like very much so for that to give them that place to not not relying on them to. Let me add this <laughs> about the husband. Find right, the food. Like your mom was the one that first said, "Hey, we had to slow down on Saturday." Mm. And it's not because I didn't care; I just don't see it. Yeah, like I would always go, go, go. But what I listened to, as a husband, I listened to my wife. We added it to the <gasps> repertoire. What? Just once. <laughs> okay, I added it to the repertoire, and it. It was a game changer, probably yeah. from when we were in our mid, uh, late thirties on. That, that's when yeah. we started doing it, probably because of, of having kids. Then, as you know, you said, as a dad, I always wanted you guys to know that Sunday was a time of stopping and of worship. Like, like, yeah. And by the way, folks, I'm going to throw this out: if you're not in a church right now, I understand that COVID threw it for a loop and stuff. But yeah, we're in somebody would disagree with this. I really believe COVID's close to being kind of done. Well, at least the, the laws around it are, have, have lifted. So right. well, yeah, the, yeah. the variant is real. I get it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. in fact, I think I had COVID a month ago and that's what I was sick. Yeah. And it is. Well, we did have COVID. Right. Thank you, too, right. right. Yeah. You guys test. So, but I do know this. I've had the flu and I'm not saying I understand that. I don't want to get in that diet. <laughs> but now that it's been two years in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think, I think, you know, the, the, by the way, I didn't get it at church. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was travel for your job. I, I think I'd want to tag on to what you said because it was obvious that you wanted uh, Sabbath to mean something. Um, we were limited. In, you limited us in our activities in good ways. And I think the most important thing, and this is what we don't want to hear, is not to teach your kids Sabbath. Dude, I'd say especially, uh, man. Sabbath especially you know, things is which have seen not and, taught. Yeah, those things which you have seen and heard in me do. That's what Paul said to the Philippians, and it was a phenomenal statement, and it's a phenomenal way to live. Absolutely. And by the way, that's all about this manhood, mentoring, maturity. Right. You know, we can get in here and have a little podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if we're really not doing this and yes. we're not examples of that, then, you know, folks, not only will you not listen, our own family won't listen. <laughs> and I don't blame them. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's this is, there's right. nothing better than that. And it's just, I, I'll finish with it. Yeah. It's kind of like the guy that talks about marriage that's never been married. <laughs> or has been married six months. Or, or, <laughs> or, hey, by the way, I was this guy. I was a youth yeah. pastor. And I was like, I realized after I had kids, it was different than mm. working with kids. But I will tell you this working with kids helped me prepare yeah, yeah, to yeah. be a parent. And I thank God for that. But, you know, this is all about being an example. There's no question about it. Love it. Thanks, Dan. Hey, great. Love you and thankful for the opportunity to talk about something that's really, really important. 